Lark du Cream. That's what I have to say to you guys today. Lark du Cream. This is the movie show here on Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. It's one o'clock on, on a given Tuesday, and that's George Kaysen. And uh, George is a movie reviewer person who joins me every couple of weeks. And we talk about movies because there are so many good movies. You know, our world has become just a wash in good movies. Not only this year, but years years back. Um, it's a it's a joy to have all these movies, and it's a joy to have George with us too. Hi, George. Hi. George, what do you want to review today? Love to crime, to crime. It's the art of crime. It's a great series, really good thinking. You know, what they've done is they've linked up these art historians, eminent art historians, with the special agency in France that deals with crime, with stolen art, art pictures and sculpting and stuff like that. So it's, it's very much French culture because as, as you know, the art and, and uh, wine are the big things I can get into that in French culture. So, so they take that and then this guy, um, Nicholas, well, the actor's Nicholas Gobb and Antoine Vézelay or whatever, he's a cop and he, he was in the crime, uh, regular crime section, but he had a run in with the supervisor. So they transferred him where his friend um, Pardo is the chief, it, where they do, they focus on art crimes, stolen paintings and things like that, forgeries and whatever. So uh, the whole plot is that this art historian played by Eleanor Gossett Bernheim, uh, she's the actress, the chief protagonist, and she helps him because he doesn't understand anything. He's a typical, <laughs> the typical cop, you know, that's really not into this kind of stuff at all. He's into the basics, you know, go in and find the, 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 the criminal and blah, blah, blah. He knows nothing about art. Well, that's kind of interesting right there, you know, Very because we're having, we're having a look inside the French police. Yes. And we're, we're, you know, and we, we see so many cops and robbers and police movies in the United States. Um, so we think we're going to get a break when we when we see the French police and that maybe they would know a little bit about art uh, because they live in the, in the world center for art. He doesn't know anything about art and zero. And that's one of the challenges of the movie. So he's a he's a dynamic character. He's always learning about art. He's resisting the lessons. But ultimately, in each case, he gives in and he actually learns about the art that is involved. One piece of art for every every episode. Huh? A little bit he learns, but it doesn't go in. It's like That's right, exactly. It is the case is over, and and they're and even her father, who's another art historian, uh, he comes in. He's trying to uh, give him tra training, you know, like classes, and it's like it's like talking to a brick wall, and he's he really is resisting this, and then they get into a little bit of that. It's his childhood. His father, who's an, a prominent attorney, had abandoned him and his mother. Um, when he was very young, and there was this picture uh, in the in in the house they were living in of this little boy that he was being friends with. You know, when he was a kid, he was talking to him, and the father kept the picture and and threw the mother and him out. So that's why he's got a mental block. And they get into the psychology. And one of the things I can say, I, this is on a tangent though, the casting is phenomenal because uh, I've lived in France and I know the the personalities and my relatives over there. And the casting is superb. Each of the roles, whether it's the, psych the two psychologists, whether it's the art historian daughter, uh, you know, and the father, whether it's the cop, you know, uh, Antoine, the, everyone is, is perfect for the role. But that's, a, like an, that's an aside. So bottom line, it's an interesting, interesting combination, which we don't really see here because I mean, we've got the Guggenheim and the Metropolitan Museum of Art and LA Art Museum that they built, you know, recently that up on that hill. But I mean, it is, we don't have that kind of emphasis that the French do. French, it's like immersed in their culture. Like I was relating my father's first cousin. Um, he was a, a patron for this famous artist. And my other, one of my other cousins, uh, my other, um, 
he, he is basically a physician. He retired and moved to Ez, which is on the Hut d'Azur, and he's a sculptor now. So, I mean, art is so central to their culture. Also wine. I mean, my father's cousin is the patron. He, in his basement, he's got a, a wine cellar going, wines going back to 1200. You know, that's the, it's like a hobby. Like people here collect coins, you know, or stamps. They collect wine. <laughs> Very now you bring, you bring me back, George. You know, you make me want to go back to France because I'm a Francophile. Um, oh, I can to. I can make a decent stab at speaking the language, and really? I really enjoy the place, yes. and uh, I, I see it as uh, so different from the U.S. And what you know, one problem. thing, one thing I, I want to mention is that um, years ago, my wife and I went to Paris, and we went to Saint Chapelle, which is a chapel oh, across the street from Notre Dame, um, and it's a place where you can see concerts. Okay, mm -hmm. but it happens to be located in a police station in a police station. So in order to get into Saint-Chapelle, you have to walk through the police station and you see it all. You see what the Paris police are really like. And they look like thugs. I'm sorry I said that. Yes. They, are, they are totally you know, vulgar and noisy, unkempt. That's what they are. And maybe I'm just thinking of the detectives and all that, you know, in American television, you see the same thing, I suppose. Um, but this was an example of that. So, you know, you may think that the French are all elegant and wear nice clothes and, and live a high life. Not everybody. And in this case, you're introduced to the police. Now, I think what's very interesting is to take that in a country which is generally speaking concerned about art, which is, which which claims to be you know a great art capital, and it is in many ways in the museums and in the culture itself. How do you deliver a tall, bald-headed Antoine who doesn't care and know anything about art? How do you make the show called The Art of Crime? How do you make that into a show that deals with art? Well, it's simple. You give him a partner, and the partner, uh, and that father you mentioned, they deal with art, and they educate him. So there's a constant education. And in educating him about art, they're educating the audience too, aren't they? So you learn tons of stuff about, you know, European art. Visually, the protagonist, uh, what was her first name? I, I, you know, in the movie. Antoine. Florence, Flo Flo, Florence, that in, in the movie. She, oh, Florence, yeah. That's her name in the movie. Yeah. She conjures up all these famous artists from centuries back, really famous. And they actually bring them in their costume with her visually. And then she's talking to them on the screen. And you actually can see, because I knew these artists from before. So it's pretty realistic, you know, Van Gogh, uh, Lautrec. Toulouse Lautrec and all these different famous, uh, uh, you know, artists, and she it also it brings them from from the past into the movie, into the series, TV series. So you actually see what they look like, and they start talking about their art and what was important to them and what was what their problems were, tra tra travail, you know, problems and stuff. So bottom line is it's, it becomes really realistic as an educational experience. And for those who really don't aren't don't know art history, you know, uh, I mean, what was that professor Jacques Guillemin, I took a course on French art from Jacques Guillemin at Stony Brook. So I mean, uh, you know, and then I took Spanish art from Leopoldo Castedo, you know, and then I went back. You remember the name, good for you, I George. I remember at 70, almost 74, I don't have much Alzheimer's at this age. And then um, uh, Leopoldo Castedo. And then in France at Sorbonne, it was, I believe it was Madame Goldscheider who was teaching L'Art de France. And they used to take us to those museums, you know, and whatever. Uh, I mean, it was really interesting. They took us to the, the Louvre and Garden de Tuileries was their paintings and sculpture there too. So they, so we got a pretty good broad perspective you know, well, they also they also drill down on works of art that you may not have heard about, yeah. schools of art that you may you may have seen, but works of art that are not 
necessarily the, the popular ones, and some of them are very odd works of art, which makes the experience all you know all the more profound. You realize that, and they're not kidding; they're not making it up. These are real works of art, very valuable works of art, uh, and you get to see them and understand them and place them in French or European history. Um, and this makes a very educational experience. Uh, so you're operating on so many levels in this series to learn about French culture, to learn about French police, to learn about the practice of psychiatry in France, <laughs> to learn about, of course, French art, and to learn about crime, that <clears throat> crime involving art. You know, I, I don't know if we see that much crime involving art in the U.S., but in this, in this series, we see every twist and turn you could imagine about how crime can be involved with art. And every episode has another piece of art of some sort and another crime with that art. Can you talk about some of the crimes, George? Oh, I'm trying to think. Uh, okay, uh, one of them, I think it was the first one, there's, there was this heiress and um, she wanted this painting, this famous, famous painting. I, if I remember correctly, it was Leonardo da Vinci. And he was sort of had this homosexual gay relationship or whatever with another, with his assistant or whatever. So he had painted this picture of what was ostensibly, you know, a woman, you know, it was, I forgot the, the name of it, uh, Mona Lia or something like that. And, 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 and um, the little kid, who, who was the kid, sees this. Some little kid. Oh, oh, I see. It was Antoine's kid, right? Somehow comes to the police station, right? And and they and they they're studying this on the computer, and and the kid says, "That's a man," <laughs> you know. It just it was just like you could tell. So what was Leonardo trying to say? You know, it was it was like interesting. That was and the heiress, because this was such a special picture, you know, that it had been lost or something. Uh, they couldn't find the original, right? That um, that this guy was wanted to steal it, right? Uh, for and and uh, you know he, he went to steal it, and then this other guy wanted to take it away from him, like another criminal, who who was eventually you find out the criminal was the butler, <laughs> isn't it? Always the butler, <laughs> the butler for the for the heiress. That that was tired of just being a butler, and he, and he they it figured out that that was the that was not uh, uh, that was the original because it, it wasn't a, 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 a copy. It was the original, so it was worth millions, right? Millions of dollars. So he kills the 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 art historian that was that stole was stealing this from from you know from wherever you know they thinking it was a copy, right? And then he stabs him, and then this whole plot goes. And then you see the butler acting very. Every one of these, uh, you know, series, uh, it's always someone you see earlier that looks so innocent, right? And then, and then, and then they. That's the, that. Just like you see on, on other shows, that's the one who actually did the murder, right? And another one is this. This. Flo Flo's mother and 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 the other uh, art historian's wife passed away. She was an Egy Egyptologist, and she was training this other woman uh, in Egyptology. Right. So the thing is, this whole plot goes with somebody gets gets murdered. Right. And at the end, you're wondering who would kill this 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 uh, this person. You know. And it, what, what eventually happens is that her husband had died six months before. And in Egyptology, there was that they, they go through all this, you know, they go through the mother's uh, files, boxes of files, and they find out this symbol, you know, and there's this other guy who's an Egyptologist. And then this woman, Vaillant or whatever she was, right? And, and, and who was the, uh, the student of the mother, in, in, and she knew enough to know that there was a way to bring back the dead, but you've got to kill somebody to get 
their soul to bring back the dead. And she desperately loved her husband. So she wanted her husband back, right? So the, the plot ends, the thing starts, ends. Basically, she decides she's going to kill Antoine, the, 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 you know, the cop, the thick-minded cop. She's going to kill him. She, she was able to knock him out. And then she gives him an injection. She says, you won't feel a thing. He's tied up already, right? And she's ready to stab him. And then it, it's something about this scarab and this statue that was, they're trying to get the statue and the, and the necklace together because that's how the ritual goes to bring back the dead person, right? So she's about to stab, uh, you know, Antoine, right, the cop, and they all rush it. This happens time and time again. Just at the uh, 11 hour, 99, uh, 59 minutes, they come in and save the person right before, which never happens. Oh, yes, it's, it's, good, it's good television. Yeah, but you know good. what? The, the, um, the, the, these characters that you talk about, they're all flawed. They're all flawed. None of them is, a, is an American type hero type character. Um, Antoine the cop, he's flawed. He's, he's a klutz. He's a tall, strong, athlete kind of guy, but he's like, I wouldn't call him bald. He's semi-bald. He doesn't shave very much. Maybe that's very French. Um, and he's flawed and he, he breaks down. He doesn't, he doesn't necessarily succeed. It's, it's luck that gets him out of these predicaments. And the, um, the woman, Flo Flo, uh, uh, Eleanor Bernheim is the name of the actress. Um, she, I wouldn't call her all that good looking. I wouldn't call anybody in this in this movie very good looking. You know, you you enter into a um, you know a, a series with uh, all French and all happening in Paris. You'd think somebody would be good looking. No, not really. And uh, and then she and she has all these psychological issues, and her relationship with with Antoine is so strange. You would never see that in an American movie. Uh, she's she's not attracted to him uh, from a romantic point of view or even a sexual point of view. She's attracted to him because somewhere in her flawed psychology, uh, she needs to have him nearby, or she has hypophobia, and and she uh, would fall down the stairway. And it, it's weird because they you know she finally realizes this that she needs him, but not as a romantic object as a stabilizing object in her strange psychology. And then you have her father, who is a kind of nutcase, and she has all these arguments with him about art history. And he always gets in the way and messes in with her relationship with the police department. She's kind of a contractor for the police department. She hired to help Antoine understand about art because he, they are involved with the unit that specially deals with cultural crimes, cultural crimes. Um, it's the Special Bureau, and it's a French acronym for it. But what I, what I find interesting is, is none of this, none of these elements would be popular uh, and have been popular in an American series. But in a French series, um, they are, because they, they resonate with that sort of, um, that kind of difference Viva la difference um, between French culture and American culture. And that's what attracts me. That's what attracts me to foreign films because I want to see how they conduct themselves now, today. I want to see how their films are different. So my wife and I spend a lot of time with foreign films because it's, it's sort of like traveling, George. It's sort of like traveling. And so, uh, you know, th this, uh, I'm afraid I have to admit that uh, I didn't see all of the episodes the way you have. Um, but was there a dynamic in the episode? Did they change over time from one season to another? Uh, did these characters uh, develop further? Yes, there's there's a there's a subplot. Now, number one, it because the world goes you now the way the world is. I found her very attractive. You know, I, I sort of falling in love with her. Even I mean, I find her she cute. I mean, she wasn't raving beauty, but. There was something about her that I found attractive, and maybe because I'm into French kind of culture. And it didn't, and it didn't bother you that she always got in trouble. 
No, she was, was interesting. I mean, she's she's an interesting character, you know. She's okay. not this el elegant kind of thing, you know. She's sort of like a frumpy kind of, you know, at times, you know. But the, what's developing is how she and Antoine subconsciously they're drawn together from a romantic kind of thing, and that's where we get when we get to the fourth uh, season. It's developing. It's an undercut. He's dreaming about her, you know, making love to her. She's dreaming at night of making love to him. And then season five, that's going to be 2022, they're going to probably develop this further. They sort of leave it hanging, you know. He's supposed to be marrying this other policewoman who has some background in art, you know. But she's, she doesn't work with Antoine the same way that Flo Flo Florence does, you know, where they actually can solve a case. She's not quite on the same level from an art historian kind of place, you know? So um, that's what's developing. Now, in terms of, they get into different, different types of crimes, right? It's always somebody gets stabbed. Does it any, I'm trying to think, yeah, I don't even remember. Don't, don't forget happened. the one with where, where the, uh, the art um, the tour guide in the museum was, was poisoned. You remember that one? Oh, the, the woman. Yeah. It was it was the director, the art that yeah, this woman was poisoned, right? By um I'm trying to think, remember, and then and then yeah, she was poisoned, and then they're trying to figure out why she was poisoned, and it turned out, oh yeah. Her husband, right, was the <laughs> well her husband was the ex-husband of this guy's mother, who was a physician. Who was there uh, in all these, you know, shows? I mean, he was there, and 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 um, he was the murder. He was the killer. He was psychotic, and because he was resented, the, the her, his father, his biological father, who had abandoned him and his mother, he goes and he poisons the second wife, right? And then and then and then he also finds a way to to garot, you know, with to kill his father, right? And they think it's this other psychotic woman, right? That he was dressing in, in women's clothes and a wig when he was doing this. So they thought it was a woman and he frames her, right? But at the end, they find out it's this guy, right? He's a physician, right? And he literally poisoned this, his, his stepmother. He didn't even know because the father just abandoned him. Well, what I thought was interesting about that was that um, she was actually uh, uh, giving a, a lecture yes. about a huge piece of uh, art in the Louvre. Yeah. Um, and she fell down dead from the poison in front of her lecture tour, which was very interesting. But what, you know, this, this takes me to the whole thing about the Louvre. The Louvre plays a central role in this series. You know, you, you know the establishment shots of, uh, you know, in the beginning of every episode and throughout um, are the IMP uh, entrance, entryway, that glass, uh, you know, pyramid entryway into the Louvre. And, um, you know, th then you see various galleries in the Louvre, some of the smaller galleries and some of the larger galleries, some of the most overpowering galleries with works of art, uh, such as the one she was lecturing about, um, which were, you know, which are like 40 feet wide and 15 feet high. Um, a whole gallery of those, you know, half a mile long of these huge, um, you know, 400 year old paintings. And, and you say to yourself, boy, they are giving us a tour. They are taking us through the Louvre and they're distracting us with all this crime, or shall I say cream stuff. Um, but, but the reality is they're putting the footage on the paintings, um, which is educational. Then we begin to see those paintings and realize that these characters are living in a world of art. And, and the criminals, the, the, the crimes, always involve some degree of passion about the art. So, um, I mean, I can see that a French audience would love this. Because it, it takes, you know, they're all either Antoine um, or Florence, 
you know, either they know nothing about art or they know something, but it's not complete. Um, and a French audience um, would, would relate to one or the other of those characters or to the father who knows a lot about art. Uh, and the audience would relate to those characters and this is their culture. They care a lot about it. This is the identity of France. It's the identity of Paris. It what makes it what makes Paris Paris, um, and so you live in a world of this art. You live in a world of passion about the art, and, and that's what's so interesting about it. It's not really a crime show. It's an art show. Art show. And you show all the Beaux Arts uh, Beaux Arts architecture, you know, at the Louvre and other places. So it's it's basically. As you say, it's a movie about art and art history, but it's sort of linked in with crime. You know, um, I guess there's a reason for that. They draw people in. You know, I, I mean, I've discussed before how too much, too much violence, too much stabbing, too much shooting. You know, but the bottom line is the thread is is all art. You know, it's all the different pic how how Florence and her father. Um, analyze these paintings and how these psychotic people um, they they're playing out things in those in those historic pictures and and it, it's tied to the crime you know then that then uh, the psychotic person sees this picture and knows the picture what the picture you know those who are into the you know into the understanding it and then they work they play that out in real life you know and they go killing people you know based somehow on that on what the picture the painter was trying to say and trying to do so it's it's a really interesting series i mean i went through all four seasons and it doesn't really change that much what the changes is that subplot between antoine and florence flo flo the, what's going on between them and the budding romance that neither one is aware of, and he's going to marry this other uh, cop who's, a, who's the other art historian who's not as good as Florence, you know, in terms of getting the the, the case resolved and solved. So uh, gets interesting. And at the end of the fourth season, they're they're really getting up to the climax of where these two are going to realize that they're in love with each other as oil and water they couldn't be more different you know the two of them i mean but I'm they need each other they need they each need other to do the jobs they want to do yeah, he wants to be a good cop yes. but in in his present um, you know assignment he cannot be without her and she is this flawed mm, psychiatric mm, list of diagnoses uh which who needs the and needs a, a tall strong cop to sort of uh, you know keep her stabilized because her father is making her crazy. No, no surprise about that. Yeah, um, so let me let me ask you this, George. You know, a few weeks ago, we reviewed the Cold War. Yeah. Uh, okay, and that was uh, black and white. It was set in Poland and Paris uh, and France, but I would say Paris because in that movie, Paris was France, um, and. And uh, it was, both of them were European. Both of them were, you know, created by European writers, directors, actors. Uh, and both of them gave the American audience a view into the period piece in Europe. And so, you know, to compare them, you know, for me, uh, it's this, I'll tell you what I, my reaction to it. Um, you are thrown into another world. In, into the late 40s in Poland, which I, you know, really knew nothing about. The gestalt of it, you know, I knew nothing about. And for that matter, um, you know, the, the life of a policeman, I only knew about it from Saint Chapelle and those rough, tough cops there on the way to the, the chapel where, where they, they played concert music, uh, string quartets. Um, and so um, they, they both introduced me to uh, other uh, other environments, and and what you know, and of course that's very educational um, to know what what goes on or it could go on. Um, but more than that, it's this: it's it's that these are essentially American formats. 
you know, take take a, a series like that, cops and robbers, crime. It's an American format. Um, and uh, not so much the, the Polish movie, it's not really an American format, but somehow it's a movie that it's, it's global. That was a global movie, I thought. But I guess the point I'm, I'm making is that you see it through the lens of an American viewer in each case. Yeah. And, and you learn from it. And we are living in a world now of movies like them. And the question you ask and you ask the people you are viewing with is, would you like to be an American shoot 'em up Marvel Comics movie? Um, you know, um, or would you like to see a European movie? Um, you know, French, uh, Spanish. I told you about uh, Love in Rome with Woody Allen. I, I don't know if that's not really a Spanish movie, but or rather Italian. That's not really an Italian movie. It's um, it's an American movie made in Europe. And so what you have to say, you get the cross culture is what I'm saying. You get Hollywood imposed, or you look at these movies through the lens. Of, of American viewers looking at Europe. And you get the sense that there's a, a combining of, of the Hollywood culture, the American culture, and these European. I always, I always believe that the people who make these movies have to involve a lot of American, Americans, both in the Polish movie and, and here in, in the um, Art to Cream. But you know what? If you look at the credit, George, you don't see a lot of American names. They do it by themselves. Are they copying us, or is this, you know, their their invention? Well, there's always cross fertilization. You know, I mean, they when I was there in '68, going to school, Sorbonne, they was talking about. I took a course in diction, and they mentioned franglais. You know, all the all the English and American words that have gone come into the French vocabulary. You know. And then, and then my cousin, she was working for uh, an American firm in Paris. So, you know, I mean, this was back in 68. So, um, you know, she had gone to Sciences Politique and learned business. And so bottom line is this, I mean, American culture permeates everywhere. It's now permeating Soviet Union. I mean, I, I went, uh, you know, and, and, and that was before, but I'm this, I mean, you go to Mo Moscow, they've got these mansions, they've got the, these uh, malls, you know, basically American type, you know, so our culture pretty much permeates our language, you know, English is, a, is, a, is an international language. So our culture has permeated in France, you know, I mean, um, so bottom line is, yeah, there's influence, as you're saying, Jay, there's, there's a lot of influence. And then what they did is they took that crime thing and they put this art in it to make it more French, you know, but, um, you, you know, there's no separation, I mean, especially now with the internet. I mean, there's, I mean, you can talk to your relatives on Zoom anywhere in the world and Skype and, you know, the, so, I mean, yeah, there's, it, there's, there's elements of, of an American, uh, police type of show in this, right? But um, these things happen everywhere, you know? I mean, but the, the thing with the art, that that's, you know, we don't focus on art value here like they do over there. That's It's like gold, you know? And, and these yeah. pictures are worth millions of dollars. But you know what? Um, I don't think this series would be as interesting to me if it were in English. Of course, I read the subtitles, but it's in French. And the inflections, the language, and the, the way they speak the language, which is obviously very fast, um, that makes the, the series special. Likewise, to compare it again to, um, you know, the Cold War, that's in Polish and some amount of French when they were, you know, citing uh, Paris. Um, but it wouldn't be the same in English. It simply would not. And I, I think I want it to be in Polish and I want it to be in French. And I, I, I enjoy the subtitles, um, but I like to hear the language spoken. And it, it also goes to the proposition of other American student in school doesn't really learn a lot of languages or any languages. And the American, ordinary American citizen does not travel 
all that much to Europe or Asia for that matter. Um, we, are, we are living more and more in a world of multiple languages. And I, I saw some software yesterday where you write, you write it out okay, in English and it comes back not translated into French or Spanish or Italian. It comes back spoken to you with a voice that sounds live. And I'm saying, you know, artificial intelligence has completely flattened all these languages around the world. And we should treasure them. We should treasure films with foreign languages. Uh, we should treasure these cultures, whatever they are, because uh, they're going to disappear. <laughs> See, I I'm not the typical, I didn't speak English until that kindergarten. My grandmother had lived in Italy, Germany, Bavaria. They left in 1923 when that crazy Hitler was coming. They, he spoke in, in the hall and the, the city town the center in Memmingen and they ran because they were foreigners and he was nuts. So then they went to France. So she lived in, they lived in Italy, they lived in Germany, they lived in France. So my grandmother spoke like five or six languages and she raised me because my mother was in the fashion thing working. So my paternal grandmother. So I, I had, I knew five years. I, and when I went to kindergarten, I, I, the teachers would go cross-eyed because I was, my sentences were in five different languages, right? So I grew up in that kind of a multilingual. And I know French. I, I went to school there. They spoke French in the house when I was a kid. So to me, those subtitles were just a little help, you know? So I got immersed in this. So, so my perceptions are a little different, you know. Well, would you prefer a movie, a European movie, to be in, in English or the local language, whatever it is? Local language, because that makes it, as you said, that makes it more real. I mean, I enjoyed the fact that this was in French. It, it, it gave it a lot of color. It, and you know, the inflection. I was totally understanding the personalities, and I was saying the way they, like I said. The, whoever did the, the, the casting, phenomenal. Each one, that psychiatrist, you know, the, uh, the, no, no, not the psychiatrist, the psychiatrist, that she was well casted. The woman who was going to kill the Egypt Egyptologist, they were all casted as French people. You, they, they were, their characters were French, you know? Right. Even, even and and the, you, you see that happen and you realize, or you should realize, that the, the the criminal mentality, the criminal person, it's different in France as it is in the US. In many ways, so it's, it's great to see the comparison. Great to have a review of it from you, George. And we'll do another one in a couple of weeks. We yeah. haven't made up our minds, but the two possibilities are The Last Love Letter and that Woody Allen movie I mentioned, uh, Love in Rome. Uh, so we'll take a look at both of those. Maybe we, we can even compare them. Wouldn't that be something? George Kaysen, um, The Movie Show, right here on ThinkTech. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you, Jay. Hello.